Hello everybody. Today's uh, December December uh, 22nd, 2012. Uh, welcome to my uh, segment on uh, serious survival. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is the psychological effects of bugging out is going to have on you. I uh, haven't seen too many videos out there that cover this. Um, you know, there's that uh, movie of Tom Hanks where uh, his... Uh, plane he's working for FedEx and he's, his plane is struck by lightning anyway it crashes in the sea and he's stranded on an island and then uh, uh, over a period of time you know he's stranded there for like two or three years and uh, being alone has a really uh, hard psychological effect on you uh, if you're with your family and stuff then you know you're better off if you're with somebody but you know, if you're with somebody, that's also, um, you're easier to, to track, you're easier to spot, and, uh, you know, you're, you're psychologically, you're put in a whole different situation and stuff. You know, you got your, your wife and your kids, your family, your mom and dad or whatever, you know, friends, family with you and stuff, you know, um, it's, you, you, the dangers are, are such a higher level. Uh, just for the fact that you're just so easier, so much easier to uh, spot and detect. Where if you're just alone, um, like you and another person, you can escape up into the mountains and stuff, and uh, you know you'd be really, really hard to detect if you if you play your your cards right. Um, you know the, the thing about it is, is being up there uh, for long periods of time. You know, was like Tom Hanks on that movie. He ends up uh, finding this volleyball that had washed ashore, a Wilson volleyball, and he named it Wilson, and he painted a face on it, and and that was his form of communication. Because the lack of communication, lack of that people contact over long periods of time, will really have a, a hard psychological effect on you. Uh, people are social critters. We're social creatures that uh, you know we require. Food and water, shelter, and you know, and we do. We require contact, you know. Um, so, being up in the mountains all alone and stuff, without anybody, in you know, some people are different. Some people it's going to affect quicker, and some people are going to be up there for, you know for months before it actually starts to affect them and they start they're in their own world you know and uh, if you're up there isolated all alone and you've been up there for months on on end and just say for an example with a scenario like if we were for invaded by a foreign country you know and uh, we had war right here in our land right on our home home front um, and uh, you know, the thing about it is, is if you come across somebody else, automatically, uh, you know, you're going to panic. You're, you know, is that a friend or is that foe? Who is that? You know, it's really important to tr keep your, keep your, keep your rational state of, of, of judgment, you know, king. It's, it's really, really, really important and critical that you do that. You just don't want to start shooting everybody. You know, thinking that they're your enemy or that they're a person that's, that's going to be wanting to prey on you. And, and uh, you know, there's always those fears and there's always those possibilities. But the thing about it is, is if you do bug, have to bug out and you do have to, um, uh, you know, go up into the mountains uh, at the higher elevations and stuff. Because you don't want to be down in the foothills. That's where all your game's going to be during the winter. But during the summer, they're going to go back up into the higher elevations and stuff, and there's going to be plenty of food, uh, you know, for you to, to, to uh, have access to. But uh, in the winter and stuff, all your big game, all your food supply, the snow, the heavy snow is going to drop them, or going to push them down to the lower elevations. So you're going to want to be up in the higher elevations because it's going to be harder for them to spot you. It's going to be harder for them to detect you. And, uh, you know, uh, like I said, you know, if, it, if it's snowing and stuff, find yourself a spot, stay there, 
uh, you know, uh, particularly find yourself a lake where you can do some ice fishing and stuff. Um, the less tracking around, the less footprints you have around your area, the better off you're going to be. It's going to be harder for them to detect you and, and uh, you know, so from, from air and, and anything else. Uh, if, if, if you're in an area and you've been tracking around, walking around for hundreds and, you know, of yards around your camp, those tracks, they're going to be able to be detected really, really easy. And they're going to know that there's activity there and they're going to come up and investigate it. And if they're foreign troops, you know, or a, a, a threat, they're going to want to surround you and close in and you're dead, you're, you're gone, you know, um, you know, so, uh, you know, or taken prisoner and then who knows what they're going to do with you there. They could, you know, obviously if you have a firearm and stuff, then obviously they're going to see you as a potential threat and they just may sh shoot you on the spot, you know, once they, uh, contain you. But anyway, uh, it's hard saying. It's really, it's, it's a really spooky thing. Thing to think about you know in in a sense of, of reality if it was to actually really really happen I mean when you really sit down and you start pondering about it, it it's spooky man it really is but the thing about it is is uh, you know um, you're gonna want to find yourself a place isolate yourself in that place and uh, y you know like I said, if you can find yourself a nice little lake that's got, you know, has uh, fish in there, um, that'd be ideal because you can survive off of fish uh, throughout the winter season and stuff, you know. Um, with, of course, with some of the other supplies and stuff that I told you to go ahead and bring, like vitamins and stuff like that, they really, really help and, and uh, you know, give you, and you know, some nutrients and stuff as far as vitamins and minerals and stuff that you need on top of just the meat diet, so to speak. But anyway, um, so the thing about it is, is uh, being alone, uh, your biggest thing is, you know, the big question mark. What's going on down in the valley? What's going on at home? What's going on, uh, you know, have they killed everybody? Do they got everybody in prison camps? Um, you know, what's really, really going on? Is it kind of like the Red Dawn, you know, where they allow citizens and stuff to go about their daily life in a martial law setting to where you have a curfew at a certain time, you know, but you're able to get out and move around a little bit and stuff, you know. Um, the last thing they want is people to be able to congregate and get together with other people and stuff and devise a plan to, to overrun them and to take take their town back, you know, um, you know, if I was a, a soldier invading a foreign country and stuff, you know, um, you'd want to be really, really cautious about that because America, you know, with the Second Amendment and stuff, with the right to bear arms, you know, that's one of the biggest fears. The Japanese, you know, they thought it was ludicrous. They thought it would be a very, very bad idea to invade America because behind every blade of grass is a gun, you know? And so that's pretty much the situation now, and that's what keeps us from, from being subject to tyranny, you know, rather it be foreign or domestic. And so I, I, hope, I hope and pray that those rights are never taken away from us, because if we allow those rights, that Second Amendment right to uh, bear arms and stuff taken away from us and stuff, you know, um, this, you know, we are so subject for hurt. <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, uh, the psychological effect is going to be really, really harsh. Um, you're going to be all alone. You know, if you have a dog to take with you, you know, take a dog with you, you know. Um, you know, have something that you can be able to communicate with, that you can be able to, to hold and love, you know. I mean, to be able to have that physical contact with, you know, just to, just to have a buddy along with you, you know what I'm saying? Just be able to, to, to talk to. I mean, if, if, if you do have somebody that's going to be bugging out with you and stuff, then great. And uh, because uh, you're, you're going to be surprised that lack of communication can have an effect on a, peop on a person. And so, you know, like I said, but if you, if you have your family with you and stuff, 
then uh, you know, then you have that communication. You have that that feel of of of, of connection there, and uh, so it, it's it's uh, it's not those psychological effects and what having stuff are not going to be as harsh. But if you're a loner, if you're a lone wolf, and you're you're up there, it, it's it's going to really pay you know take its toll on you and stuff. And so you need to be prepared for that. You need to understand that when you start getting all weird in your mind and what have you and stuff, you know, um, that uh, you're going to try to start justifying thoughts and rationalizing thoughts that are purely irrational and very, very dangerous. You know, well, I'm just going to come down and, and uh, check out home and, and check out the valley and see what's up, you know. Well, especially during the winter and stuff, you're going to, you know, you're going to leave snow tracks, you know, and uh, to and from your camp, you know, and uh, so you're going to be detected. You, you got to go up there and isolate yourself, and that's where you're going to be. And then when summer comes around, then you can move around a little more and stuff, you know, because from the air, they're not going to be able to see your tracks. But in the winter, an airplane, you know, clear up in the sky and stuff with some binoculars or with a, with a, um, with a, uh, you know, digital camera, zoom camera, you know, spotting scope like so to speak, and what hanging stuff, they're gonna be able to see those tracks. And they're gonna be able to pinpoint where you're at. And then, you know, you're in trouble. So, but just being alone and stuff like that is it, it can make you go crazy. So you gotta be prepared for that and you gotta understand the signs and stuff. Uh, you know, when they start occurring so you can turn around and keep yourself in check. You can say, okay, this is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm experiencing. You, you know, it's like, you know, I, um, you know, and then people want having stuff who are not familiar with, it, uh, with survival and, and are, you know, are not survivalists. And uh, th they know that they got to get the heck out and, and they got their gear and everything and stuff, but they've really never done any camping. They've really never done any hiking. They've really never went out there and lived off the land. They've never done any hi uh, hunting and stuff. And there's a lot of people out there like that. Man, they're going to have, the, they're, you guys are going to have the hardest time. You're going to, you're going to, it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, 10 times worse. On, on you folks that uh, have never had any experience doing stuff like that than it is on for somebody that's uh, familiar with camping and hunting and hiking and, and enjoy that stuff, you know. Um, I can go up here and I can have no problems whatsoever, you know. I know how to build a, a good shelter. I know how to build a quick shelter, you know. Um, I uh, can live off the land. I know all my edible, wild edible plants and stuff to, that I can eat and sustain me. I can hunt with snares, you know. I can, you know, I can hunt deer with spears and different things and stuff like that. Make a tree stand, they walk right underneath you, you know. With a spear, you got dinner. You know what I'm saying? For, for quite some time, uh, at least in the winter. <laughs> In the summer and stuff, your meat is—it's really hard to 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 keep good. It's uh, you know the heat. There's really no way to keep it refrigerated, and um, you know so in the summer and stuff, if I was uh, subject to a survival type of like you know uh, situation, then I'd be eating fish, grouse, you know birds and stuff like that, smaller smaller critters, uh, squirrels and stuff. Something that I can s s consume and sustain myself but I won't have to waste. If I kill a deer, I'm gonna be able to get maybe, you know, a day's worth of meat off that deer before it starts spoiling and going bad, you know, out there in the sun and stuff. And then you got bloat flies, you got maggots. I mean, so, you know, but in the winter and what having stuff, you know, your meat's gonna stay good, it's gonna stay cool, it's not gonna spoil on you and stuff. There's not a lot of predators and stuff that are gonna come around. But you do have coyotes and you do have mountain lions here. Uh, you do have black bear here where I live. Uh, you know, if, if you're up in Yellowstone and stuff, or up in Wyoming, Montana, I, Idaho, if you're up in grizzly country and stuff, you know, um, grizzlies, um, there are some late bears that hibernate late, and, you know, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna be more dangerous because they're really, really hungry, but they call them ice bears, they're out when it snows, you know, and they don't hibernate until probably early, early December or real late November. And, um, uh, you know, they're just real late hibernating bears and stuff. And, 
and they're going to be a lot more dangerous and stuff like that. So if you get them around the camp, you need to take care of them before they take care of you. Uh, you just can't chase them off. They'll be back. You, you, it, it's, a, it's sad to say, but uh, it's either you or them. You know what I mean? Uh, if you, you know. But anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this video and stuff. But just be aware that uh, you're going to be going through a lot of psychological effects and stuff if you have to bug out and you're all alone and uh, you have to isolate yourself from everybody um, you know from that threat period you know you're going to be out in the mountains you're going to be out there in the desert or whatever and stuff isolated all by yourself nobody around you know it's going to it's going to pay it's it's going to take its toll on you and it's going to really start affecting you psychologically you have, you know, having, having, you know, uh, like I said, invest in, in one of those portable solar uh, powered kits, you know. Um, <coughs> you have some, you have a little fold out one and one stuff <coughs> that recharges iPad, iPods, telephones and stuff like that. Your, your, uh, but you don't want your telephone, you don't want your, you don't, yeah, you don't want your, you don't want your uh, phone because, uh, they can track you by that, you know. Um, but to have an iPod full of music, something that you're going to be able to stay attached to something that is really, that connects you with society in a sense on a psychological scale, you know. Um, you know, if you can carry a small little, little notepad, a digital notepad or whatever and stuff, you know, they can be recharged by those solar panel kits and stuff, you know. They can just easily attach to your backpack. Um, or, you know, actually put into your backpack, some smaller ones, but uh, keep batteries recharged and stuff like that because those things are a luxury, but sometimes they're a necessity, especially at nighttime and stuff. You don't want to be building big fires. You don't want, you know, to have your lights on all the time and stuff, you know, because from, the, from up above and even across a canyon or whatever on another hillside, you can be spotted with those things. So if you have a headlight on or, a, you know, a flashlight, or if you have uh, a campfire going and stuff, you know, they're going to spot you. They're going to surround you. And if you have a firearm, they're going to see you as a potential threat. And they're going to shoot and ask questions later. You know what I'm saying? So the thing about it is they're not going to try to peacefully detain you like police officers. If, it's, if, it's, we're being foreign, if we're being invaded by a foreign country, you know, you have a firearm with you. You're your dad. And, and you're probably that way anyway because they're probably... You're up there all alone, surviving and stuff. They're going to consider that you're going to, they're going to automatically consider you having a firearm anyhow. They're just going to shoot you. The sniper's going to take you out, you know. So the thing about it is, is, um, you know, be, be prepared. Be prepared and, uh, you know, make sure you have something, even if, you know, uh, a radio, uh, you know, you know, CD, you know, did one of those Walkman CD players, something that's going to be able to give you some music, something that's be able, that's going to be able to, to kind of like make you feel connection with something else psychologically. But anyway, this is Carl. Thank you so much, and I uh, hope you watch my my next segment. Thank you.